In this video, I'm going to give an update on installing an RX 570 in the Hackintosh build. Um, I put an ASUS RX 570 8GB in this machine with 32GB of RAM and an i7-8700. It was working fine, but I was having intermittent sort of kernel panic, so sometimes it would get to the login screen and it would just freeze as soon as I entered my password or it would get to here, i get to the desktop, and then when the startup item started to load in, it would freeze. And it was pretty random. Sometimes I would open up Finder, and all of a sudden I would like go into a folder, and yeah, it would just freeze as well. I was uninstalling different startup items, disabling different startup items. Certain things seemed to work, and then all of a sudden, after one or two boots, it would freeze again. And it would just completely freeze and the mouse would become unresponsive or if I was using audio, the audio would just cut out suddenly and the whole system would lock up and I would have to do a hard reset. I tried doing a full reinstall of macOS as a sort of a last resort. I actually thought that I would have to just start again from scratch and reinstall everything. But thankfully, macOS isn't like Windows. So when you reinstall everything that you had installed, all your settings are all preserved, which is pretty awesome. I wish Windows did that. I ended up doing some sort of research, tried updating texts and things like that. Uh, what I found was that when using Kext Updater, so I'll skip this version for this, but basically Kext Updater was offering versions of Clover bootloader and also the Intel Moz Ethernet that were, for whatever reason, incompatible. It's like an upgraded version from the one that I'm running, but when I installed the updated Clover bootloader, it wouldn't boot. When I installed the updated Intel Moz, I'll, I'll check it here and I'll show you. So this version of Clover this version of Clover that it's recommending, the, the 5126. It was actually 5125, and it wasn't working at all. Um, and the Intel models and Ethernet, um, yeah, it wasn't working either. So updating these seemed to be fine. And the fake SMC was fine. But yeah. Basically, it was making it unbootable, and I was lucky that it had a bootable version of Mojave that I could get back into the system and reinstall a better or the last working version of Clover Bootloader. Then the other thing that I tried, whenever I installed the RX 570, I changed the system profile. So the SM BIOS, everything's asking me to update here, but I can wait. So you have to mind DFI. Oh no, hold on, that's the wrong one. Okay. So if I mind that, open that partition, go to my P list. Open with Clover Bootloader. And then that opens it up in here. And if I go to SM BIOS and this little drop down menu here, you can select which type of Mac you want to emulate. So I had it on this one because my system has an i7 8700 in it. So I thought that would be the most compatible one. Um, whenever I changed to it was when I started getting these freezes and I thought that maybe that was why. So I switched back. I also tried the Mac Pro 1.1 or iMac Pro 1.1, but that didn't work either. So I've switched back to this and it seemed to work. I had to re-register a bunch of software and stuff because it detected as being a different system. But yeah, 18.3 was the one that I ended up settling on. So I changed that, thought that it had solved it, it seemed to work fine for another couple of boots, and then 
it started doing it again. So I did a bit of Google research and found somebody else was having these freezes with the same system set up. Basically, I, I did a Google search on what's the best SM BIOS for i7-8700 and an RX 570. And uh, someone said, oh, I was using you know the same SM BIOS as I was using and their computer was freezing. And the solution to it was to disable the Intel graphics in the BIOS. So I've tried that ever since disabling the Intel graphics in the BIOS and just running it exclusively on the graphics card. It's all the freezing seems to have stopped and it's performing as normal. It actually seems to boot quicker and the fan on the graphics card doesn't seem to spin up quite as much. The only drawback of that is by disabling the Intel graphics in the BIOS. If I go into documents here and I try to open an image, oh, that one works fine. Basically, there's certain images, if they're, I can't open JPEG images. So if I find a JPEG, there's a JPEG. So JPEG's just gonna keep doing that and it'll even cause beach ball. And that's because Mac OS is trying to use the Intel graphics to open JPEGs. It works fine with PNGs. So that's the sacrifice that I basically am going to have to make now to, in order to stop that. See, it says not responding. I have to force quit. There may be a way for me to fix that. And if anybody knows how to do it, please let me know. Um, but for now, I just have to just not use JPEG images. It's so random. But yeah. Um, so yeah, disable an Intel graphics in the BIOS and just run it exclusively on the RX 570 has fixed it. And it's a shame that I can't open JPEGs. But hey, other than that, the system's completely stable and I haven't had any crashing or anything. And it, when it dual boots from Windows, all of my Windows drives that are anti NTFS are all here and they're all supported and they're all showing up as normal. So that's all good. I can open up projects in QBase and load sample libraries off of NTFS sample drives. And so, yeah, I'll uh, take a photograph of the BIOS settings and show you exactly what it is that you need to disable in the BIOS or maybe even a short video. Um, and that way, if you experience the same problem, you'll know how to fix it. Cheers. Okay, so once you're in the BIOS, ASROC, you go to advanced mode, you go to advanced tab, and you go to chipset configuration, and you have to go down here to IGP, IGPU multi-monitor. Trying to get it in focus here, it's being a dick. Come on. So IGP multi-monitor, set that to disabled, set your primary graphics adapter to PCI Express. In other settings, CPU configuration, you want to disable C states, which is dynamic clock speeds for your CPU, which can cause problems with audio. So if you're doing audio engineer like me, you want to have that disabled. So you have a constant clock speed. Basically, having that enabled allows the computer to see a power by underclocking the CPU, which you don't want whenever you're working on stuff. Um, software guard extension is disabled. I'm not sure if I need that enabled or disabled, but it's disabled. Intel virtualization technology disabled. Let's see. VTT, VTD disabled, um, deep sleep disabled, Bluetooth and wireless LAN, um, and riser card support disabled. Basically having that disabled has it at times 16. Now that was a problem I had as well when I first installed this card. It was set to I think it was eight by eight. Um, 
so the card wasn't working properly, um, wasn't being detected by the system. So, yeah, disable that, and it'll put it to 16 times, which is the full speed for the PCI Express. So, other than that, boot, fast boot disabled. This fucking autofocus is bloody annoying. Doesn't seem to want to focus on the letters at all. Ah, uh, yeah, fast boot disabled. That's about it. I've got the XMP profile one for the RAM. So that for the RAM, so it's running at its full speed. This is for uh, i7-8700 with 2666 MHz RAM, 32 gigabytes, and the RX-570 8 gigabytes. So yeah, if you have a similar system, those are the sort of BIOS settings that you want to be using. I'm not going to save these, but basically discard changes and exit and then if I hit F11 to get into my boot menu so it doesn't boot directly into Windows UEFIOS I need to turn off the Apollo at the screen because it's Thunderbolt. Turn it back on. Wait for the clicks. And then I'm good. And then basically select the UEFI, UEFI OS. It'll go into Clover. Hit OK. Get the debug stuff. Blazes through the Apple logo here. Much faster than my Mac Mini. Puts it to shame, to be honest. Enter password. Once that ring boots up, the Apollo console should boot up. Sonar works. Here we go. So there's the, it's connected to the Apollo. As you can see, all good. And no kernel panics. But unfortunately, yeah, I don't have, uh, I can't open JPEGs. That's literally the only thing that I can't do. But, I mean, if that means that I don't get complete system freezes every, I don't know, day or so randomly, then fine. I'll edit JPEGs or view JPEGs some way else. So, yeah. Um, hopefully that helps somebody. Cheers.